So today um, we're going to finish at 5.3 and then we're going to do 6.1 um, starting out normal distributions. Um, you have Connect Math 5.1, due tonight um, as well as Project Lab Part 3 is due tonight. Um, again, that doesn't have to be color, it can be in black and white. Um, and again, some of them you may, like if you're doing a, a imaginary class to anchor in front and behind for your frequency polygon, you're going to need to have, you might need to have a negative number. Um, other things people are experiencing is they don't have a big range of data because they use group D data and not group C data. You're supposed to use group C for this, group A and group C for this part of the project. So if you only have a shoe size, like there's only like nine items there, that's because you picked the wrong, it's got to be group C, your group C thing for this problem. Okay. Um, you can turn it in late for full credit on Tuesday. It's due tonight, so any issues or problems you have, you need to sort that out tonight, because that's this is when it's due. You can turn it in late though for full credit still on Tuesday. Um, do not print in the printer back there because it will just eat your money and not give you anything. Yeah. Did you say you take the shoe size of that? That was the wrong group. Yes. That was the wrong group. Yes. Group C, your group C data. I lost my, I thought I Yeah, I so you can look at, I have some of them over here. You guys can look through and find yours and take another picture of it. Um, you can do that. Okay, so do that during break. Don't forget to do that. Um, all right, um, and then Tuesday 5.3 is also due, and then Thursday 6.1 is due. Um, your exam is going to be, exam two is on Thursday, March 12th. Um, it covers chapters 3, 5, and 6. So for you guys, it's going to be Thursday, March 12th. Um, what that means also is that, um, is that since there's Flex Day, you guys know, I wonder what Flex Day is? It does not apply to you. We still have class because we start after 4 o'clock. However, my afternoon class isn't going to meet on the 10th which means that you guys are going to be a day ahead of them for a couple days, which means that I will most likely, the Thursday before spring break, I will let you not come to class. I still need to be here, but you can come if you want to work on homework or problems or have any questions, right? if you want to go over your exam or whatever, but you do not need to come. You can just start your spring break early. Okay. You're the best. <laughs> um, well, you guys, are, you guys are good. You guys are working hard. You're staying on top of things, which is good. So, um, I think spring break is, so I think it's probably going to be March 19th, I think. Yeah. So, we'll talk about it as we get closer. Okay. Covers chapters 3, 5, and 6. And, and we'll talk about it, because really, if none of you are coming, then I, I might not. So. <laughs> um, we'll see. Uh, all right, so this is for the exam, March 12th. There are two parts. There's a no calculator part. That's about 28% of your exam grade. That's the first part. So the first part, you don't get a calculator. However, I've decided I will allow people to get one of those, use one of those basic dumb calculators, like the dollar store calculators. Um, so they can add, they can subtract, they can multiply, they can divide. That's pretty much all they can do. Maybe square root, right? Or like, you know, you've seen those ones, right? Um, anybody have a TI-30 um, TI handy? Anybody have a TI-30 handy out there? It's this medium one. Um, a TI-30 is too smart for this part. Yeah, hold that up. Yeah, hold those up. So those ones, way too advanced for that part. Can, those are not allowed for the part one. Does everyone understand that? Who? Dumber than this. You, I'm sorry? It has to be dumber than this one. Dumber than that, Got yeah. It. Exactly. <laughs> who, who has a basic calculator? Who needs a basic calculator? Let's do, let's do that way. Who's, who doesn't have one and will need to borrow one? Because I do have like a stash of like 20. <laughs> okay. Because I, I, I go to the dollar store every time and I buy a whole bunch of pink $1 calculators. Um, so I have like 24 now, I think. Um, all right, so I, I can bring calculators for that. The second part, you will need a TI-8384 for that. Absolutely, for part two. You will have to have one for that. So you will get the, you will get the first part, 
you'll have like, it'll take you like 10 to 25 minutes to do that first part. Um, and then you'll turn that in, get the second part, and the second part is, so whenever you're done, turn it in, get the second part, and then you can use your calculator for that part, the TI-84 calculator, 83 calculator for that part. Um, it covers chapters 3, 5, and 6, but not 6.4. Um, you again are allowed one half page, one sided of notes that are handwritten by you. Right, that 8 and a half by 11, half of that. So, um, you know, half of one of these, that much. If you have your previous chapter, exam one notes on one of these, right, then you can just flip it over and use this, this part here for your exam two. And then you could use this side for exam three and that part for the final, and then you, you can use all of it and you're good. So you can do that if you like. All right. Um, I think I covered everything there. Quiz problem one. This was from the last class. Remember, we said for these probability distributions, probability distributions, I will, I will make you find the mean by hand, but you can do this part, the standard deviation, by calculator. So just put this one in list one, put this one in list two, and you're going to do the stat calc one bar stats of L1 comma L2. So L1 here, L2 there, and then stat calc. And this is what I'd like you guys to show on your to show your work on the exam. One bar stats. L1, L2. And then go ahead and do it. So um, so here, right, you have stat edit. You've put uh, you've put your X's into list one, you put all the probabilities into list two, and then you've done stat, you arrow to the calc. One bar stats of, don't just hit enter here, because you have a list and a frequency. So you have to do second L1, comma, second L2. Or if you have a fancy calculator, you, you'll have list, and you put an L1 there, and then it has frequency below that, you put L2 in there. And then it has calculate before that, and you just go down there and click on calculate. And it'll give you the same thing, it'll do the same thing as this. Um, if you, hit, if you hit calculate, it'll give you that, and then you hit it again, it'll give you this. Um, so this gives you your mean, your x bar, 1.47, the sum of the x's, the sum of the x's squared, which we don't really need for this part. And then it gives you your sx. If you had it, if it was a sample, it would give you your sx, but it knows if your sample size is, is 1, then it's not a sample. It knows it, it has to be a um, probability distribution. So then it gives you your sigma x, uh, 0.86666. So our standard deviation would be 0.867. Just give me three sig figs, that's good. I like three sig figs. Kind of always safe with that. Everybody are with that one? Moving on? Yes? No? Okay, moving on. Binomial distribution. Um, Justin, go ahead and read for us. Uh, the binomial distribution of binomial experiment is a probability experiment that satisfies these requirements. Number one has a fixed number of trials. Number two, each trial has only two outcomes. Number three, the outcomes of each trial must be independent of each other. Number four, the probability of success must receive the same uh, for each trial. Great. So, um, the key to this is find out, finding that something occurs over and over and over again, and I'm doing it, you know, I'm drawing it a bunch of times, or I'm rolling a dice a bunch of times, flipping a coin a bunch of times, picking people a bunch of times, and asking them a question, a yes, no question. And each one of those trials has only got two possible outcomes. Heads or tails. Blue marble or not a blue marble. Um, you pick a student and they, um, and you ask them a question, and they say yes or no, right? Like, um, do you... You know, do you walk to school or not? Yes or no, right? Something like that. Um, and then you go up to number one and say, oh, does it, do you know ahead of time when you're going to stop? You know before you start when you're going to stop. How many people are you going to ask? How many times are you going to flip a coin? How many times are you going to roll a dice? Do you know before you start how many you're going to do? Um, that's a fixed end number of trials. And the last thing is the outcomes have to be independent and the probabilities have to stay the same. So remember last class we had that spot where we draw a marble and we do not replace it? 
that's not binomial because the probabilities change when you don't replace the marble. Right? The probability of drawing a white marble is no longer the same. You take one out and you don't replace it. Um, but if you put it back in, you draw a marble and you replace it, you put it back in, then the probabilities stay the same, and then it would be binomial. Right? You draw it over, look at it, put it back, draw, look, back, you know, do that a certain number of times. Um, that would be a binomial distribution. Here is the notation for that. Um, Carl, go ahead and read for us. Um, N donate denotates the fixed number of trials. X denotates a special, specific number of successes in N trials. So X can be any whole number between 0 and N inclusive. Little p donate denotes uh, prob probability of success in one of the N trials. Little q uh, denotes the probability of failure in one of the N trials. Um, probability X denotes the probability of getting exactly X successing among the N trials. Great. Thank you. And remember, we're trying to find the probability of X. This probability of X, that involves X and N. X and N come into play there. Little p is not really, it's, it's kind of a probability. It's a baby probability. It has nothing to do with N and X. It's the probability of just one trial. That's fixed. That's permanent. If I flip a coin, what's probably I get heads? One half. It's always one half, no matter what happens in the world. Right? So this little p and little q, they are fixed things. Those don't change because of n or x. They're whatever they are. They're, someone described it as, um, well, we'll talk about that after we get to that slide. So, so make sure you guys are clear on that one. It's the prob it's a little probability of just one trial. Okay, here's our binomial probability formula. Probability of x equals probability of x successes out of n trials is n choose x. This is the number of ways of having n items and randomly picking x of them to be successes. Right, and then multiplied by the probability um, little p to the x times little q to the n minus x. In other words, the probability of a, of a success Multiply by itself x times, because that's how many successes you have. And then you multiply that by the probability of failure. How many times you multiply that by itself? The number of failures you have. Um, so in other words, you kind of think about it as if I had, you know, a bunch of successes, success, success, and success, and then I had a bunch of failures, then this would be having that many successes and that many failures out of, looks like, so this would be the probability of having three successes and five failures out of a total of eight things. How would you find the probability? Success, 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 fail, 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 fail. What's the probability of success? P times P times P times Q times Q times Q times Q times Q. Times Q. Because all these things have, need to happen. This needs to be a success, and this, and that's a success, and this is a failure, and that's a failure, and that's a failure, and that's a failure, and that's a failure. All those things, things need to happen in the same, in the same experiment. And we multiply. multiply. So we, that's why we multiply these. Right? So this many successes, and the rest of them failures. Um, so this is a, kind of, the, if we go back to our tree diagram, this would be the probability for any one of those branches that has three successes and the rest failures out of eight. Right? Three successes and five failures. That's that probability. And then this tells you how many branches end up with three P's and five Q's being multiplied. So that's where that, that all stems from. And here it is again. Right? And this is just me talking about it the same way like I just explained it a second ago. All right, so let's take our quiz problem number two. Um, again, n c x times little p to the x times little q to the n minus x. All right. So here, n is 7, x is 2, um, p is 0.11. That means that my 
is what? How to find my Q? <coughs> 1 minus 0.11. Because those have to, P, remember P's and Q's have to add up to 1 or 100%. They are flips of each other, right? They're, they're, um, they each represent um, probabilities of complements. And then we also need to find N minus X. N minus X is equal to 7 minus 2, which is 5. This is my number of failures, right? All right, so then we're going to have 7 choose x2 times little p, 0 0.11 to the x power, second power, times q, little q, 0 0.89 to the n minus x to the fifth power. And you guys got what? 142? Great. This one here, uh, 10 choose 6 times 0.4 to the 6 times 0.6 to the, oh, 4, that's kind of weird. Um, and you got what? What was that? 0 0.111. 0 0.111. Do you guys need a second to check with your neighbors about that one? No? Okay. Do, does anybody need a minute to finish up quiz problem 2? Or this one? Whatever this one was. Yes? <coughs> a minute? One minute? Okay, take a minute, finish up this one. And find, I need to know, you need to write down what's N, what's X, what's P, and what's Q. I'm going to ask you that in a minute. So maybe take two minutes.